Hello. Hello, AOS fans. The Agents of Sigma. And in this video, we're looking at the new starter set and its warbands. Before we get into the main content of this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and maybe even check us out on Patreon where we've got loads of new content coming. So we've done a video all about the kind of contents of the box, and in this video, we're gonna take a slightly deeper dive into the warbands themselves that are contained within the box. That will be the Fast Riders and Pete's favorite, the Sepulchre Guard. Now, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. we're recording this a little bit before the release date of the video, I'm assuming that GW have spoiled quite a lot of these changes. So we're yep. not gonna go like deep, deep down no. into the video. We're not gonna talk every card in there. No. And if you're new to the game, you're not gonna care about all of the cards because you won't know very much about them. So we are just gonna quickly run through the warbands and what's different between when they first came out over five years ago now and what they're like They've now. got different backs. They've got that different that backs, sorry, no, different that, fronts. That they have got joke. different artwork. They, they have got different artwork and they have got the, I think that's the wrong card. I went <laughs> back, didn't make a very good joke at all. Um, they have got the, obviously the new styly card backs. They do, they do indeed. I do like the fact that all the artwork in them is like uh, the alt art cards they used to do. So their backs show a different piece of artwork for them inspired and scarier and yours are all flamey and stuff, which is very cool. Yes. That's a very nice start. So looking at the sepulchral guard to start with, a lot of the stats are the same across all of the fighters. However, lots of them have gained a shield uh, rather than a dodge, which is rather cool. Anybody who's carrying a shield does now have a shield, apart from the harvester and the champion. Champion has a shield, but it's on his back, so he doesn't use it. So a lot of them are rolling shields now, which is a nice change. It's a boost to their defense. It does make them slightly more solid. It does, yeah. Test a gaze, they didn't fall down like nine pins, yeah, just yeah. eight pins. There is the prince, he gets a little bit of extra damage. The Warden does lose a hammer when he's inspired though, which is a bit of a shame, because he used to be a bit of a monster. He was an absolute beast. Yeah, three hammers, three damage, but it's now two hammers, two damage. So. I don't know whether that reflects in the starter set. I think he would be yeah, true. absolutely minced through these um, uh, fast riders. He, he could, he yeah. that, I think it might be a bit too strong. One of the other big changes is that the Warden can now move people who already have a move token, because obviously, originally, if you had a move token, you couldn't move again in Shades Bar, but you can now, and he can keep moving and activating people and keep shoving them up the board. So you could get some of your guys right at the other side of the board if you really wanted to. Not they sure move very slowly still, don't yeah, they? Yeah, still very slow, but yeah. I have to say, the increased mobility was definitely made them stronger yep. in our testing game. Overall, they've got rid of a lot of the rubbish cards. There's a lot of cards in there for this prop card that you just never were going to take, especially the objectives. And they've changed it around quite a lot now with the new cards. They've increased their mobility. They've given them a lot of upgrades that either enable you to raise them again automatically when they're killed for the petitioners or ploys that mean your petitioners no longer give um, bounty when they're killed for a whole round, which That's is pretty cool. It's really nasty. Boy, that one. There's, a, there's some cards in there which ha reduce the damage you take unless it's got cleave or knockback, which is good to keep your ward more alive. There's a card in there to give your, uh, your petitioners plus one wound and plus one dice until they die, and then you destroy the card. There are, of course, six surge cards and six non-surge cards, which six is a big cards. difference from the yes. original decks. They've got rid of a lot of cards around things like Claim the City, which just hold all the objectives. You were never going to do that as a no. Sepulchral Guard before, but they put a lot of objectives in there. They've got their own supremacy. They've got a lot of other cards around holding two objectives as well, but one of them has to be in the middle or into your opponent's territory. So it encourages you moving around the board a lot more. And there's also a card, for an upgrade for your warden where he can raise two people and you put a charge token on him which is pretty cool suddenly being able to bring two of your guys back it was back. very exciting when you did that to i was very excited it that. was very good and actually it stopped me from winning yeah yeah <laughs> so it was quite good yeah i, I was very <laughs> impressed with that there's also um, cards in there which enable you to move somebody who's already moved uh, and there's all your classic ones in there, like Bone Shrapnel, and the one that enables you to push a fighter away. Ceaseless so Attack, still in Ceaseless there. Attack, so the Necromancer yeah. Commands, all that kind of yeah, stuff. They were, so they were good cards, and they're still good cards. They're good, and they're still good. And there's all the ones in there where I was well around, giving you some of your fighters extra move, and giving your champion extra damage, and things like that. So overall, they've done a fantastic job with the deck, I think, this time around. I think it plays a Rivals format very nicely. It did seem to. It seemed You seemed to be able to keep your people coming back. I think when I've played you in the past with Sepulchral Guard, once you got too deep into the petitioners, as it were, yeah. um, it was really hard to for you to, to get them back. Yeah. It just wasn't worth it, almost, bringing them back. And so, yeah. But in this game, you had almost, you know, I've killed somebody, oh, they're back. I've killed somebody, I've got them, but they're back. And it was almost, it was more like Clash of the Titans yes. than they used to be. And it, and it felt, that felt really thematic and really quite high, even though I was rolling really quite hot dice, yeah. you were able to, um, 
keep uh, just keep the keep supply the of bodies and, and keep, yeah. keep your glory total going yeah because you just start shunting people around to go and jump onto objectives just try and hold as many as you can and even if you're taking somebody out each turn you just move somebody else onto that objective or raise more people up and then start shoving them no, around and of course so. when you do bring somebody back they are better yes um, so with our other car shenanigans to make them a little bit even better yep. um, they're quite strong and quite scary yeah and you, there are objectives in your deck as well around having fighters brought back so even if you're all you're doing is bringing fighters back that's helping you score glory as well quite yes. a lot of the time. i think i mean i think i got caught out a little bit from previously playing because in the old days quite hard to kill the warden yeah. so you i would leave him alone because actually if you got into the others enough it didn't it matter the warden still alive because you couldn't ever recover. Yeah. But here, I left the warden alone. Naturally, you were you were able to pull the strings with him. Yeah, um, yeah. So that it was. Uh, well, we've only played one game, but it, it, it did seem it did seem. I solid. think at the end of that one game, I didn't have a single fighter out of action. No, though. you didn't. No. And you had, I think, well, at least I one. Or, one. Yeah. I so, one, yeah. I think overall they definitely made the warden much more of a key figure than they even had before. Hmm. Um, his death will be a big problem for you, so you really need to protect him. You don't want him getting out of out in, into the danger zone too often if you can. Yeah. Um, but I think that the the deck there now supports you being able to keep him in the backfield, keep him pulling those strings and, and scoring you that glory. Definitely. So Fast Rider then, obviously less changes. There's only three three fighters. You've got not, seven. Not much to do. Um, the, the interesting things they've brought into Stagger in a big way. So to, obviously Stagger's a fairly new mechanic in the game. And off straight away, two of the fighters can um, Stagger with their... Uh, pistol attacks so they've got range three attacks is one thing but um those pistol attacks stagger on a crit yeah um, but um almeric eagle eye staggers just anyway crit, just just if hits, yeah. which is really good because something else has changed as well hasn't it it has indeed and that's the inspire condition Ooh. the old inspired condition was quite hard it basically anybody who was in the opponent's half at the end of the uh, round was inspired but yeah. actually that was quite quite tricky to a get more than two inspired and b then keep them alive once yeah. they got there um so that was hard but this now it's changed to uh, if you make two a t different type of attacks with a fighter yeah it's still not the easiest but, but you basically so you have to make a shooting attack and then yeah. you have to charge in yeah so you have to be i mean you could really mess somebody up by setting back obviously you can't with a sepulchral guard but you no. could mess somebody up by set, setting back uh but, but then also, you can only at, at best probably inspire two fighters because you've got four, active, round, yeah. four activations, and you can only shoot. You can shoot twice and then charge twice basically. Yeah. And if you don't, yeah. you know, and, it, and I messed that up in the first game. I think I think because some of the some of the objectives require that you have charged with all three or you have all three in your right. opponent's half or something. So you kind of like well, I can't. You've got I can't do pressure. both. Yeah, I can't do both. On reflection, I think it's better to inspire. And score the objectives because the objectives can always come a bit later. Yeah, and and if you've got that shooting attack off first and you can stagger the opponent, then that's going to give you that yes. reroll, which is very valuable when you charge in, yep. and and that just generally helps. Plus, they've got a lot of cards to help with extra firing, don't they? They can. There's a few like if you've missed, do another shot. There's a mind about that. You shoot, shoot shoot somebody else. Or, they've got a few different things. There's, there's ones that make those attacks like their upgrades that make those attacks slightly slightly better. Mm. Uh, they haven't changed much other than that. It was commented on when they first released this, leaked it on to the Warhammer community. Fast Rider, basically, he used to get three attacks when he was inspired, and they basically condensed that down to two mm. because the bird attack was much better. And he actually gets a new keyword, which is blinding. Blinded by the bird. Exactly. And it's basically, uh, it's a crit. You need a crit. It's like Grievous. You get plus one damage like Grievous, but you also stagger them. So it's kind of like Uber Grievous. Uber Grievous, which isn't bad because it's range four still. So. It's still range four. Uh, there is still a card in here for the Raptor attack. Raptor uh, strike. Raptor strike straight in one damage. Nice. Anywhere Just on the board, I think, isn't it? I think as well. Well, within like, it, it's, it's, it's got it's quite a range right, on yeah, it, yeah, so yeah, you're, you're going to hit most people. A, br a brutal attack. The objectives are they reward you for charging and hitting. I mean, that's the only weakness of them. There's quite a few that rely on you hitting. Yeah. So if your dice start to go off, then... There's nothing uh, worse you, than some you, dice that have gone off. Yeah, you, you would know. Yeah, Tom, um, take it from me. You, you you could be in a frustrated situation where, I mean, I, I, I got a bit frustrated with one of my objectives. I think I had to make two, you have to make one of each of the type of attacks successful, yeah. and I just couldn't. Just, <laughs> I just It's couldn't, a lot couldn't. harder than it sounds, yeah, exactly, especially if you're yeah. just rolling like two hammers sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah. That can be really tough. And I think. Well, I think it was combined with the fact that my other objectives were make two bolt stall pistol attacks or make a critical bolt stall pistol yeah. attack. Like, well, I, 
can't do all of these. The critical bolts on Pistol Pack's attack is even worse because it's like you're relying on that you crit. You've got to get that crit it's roll off as well. And if you do it, great. Brilliant. But um, yeah, you have to you have to get a crit. Your opponent has to not get a crit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, otherwise, yeah, it's, it can be a bit frustrating. So if you if you don't like the dice gods, Pete, I, w I wouldn't necessarily wouldn't I necessarily play these. Them. They have got one really cool new ploy which is called Aetheric Paths Ooh. which is like the old hidden paths oh, hidden paths brilliant yeah uh, should just jump across the board basically if you've got a fighter on an edge hex you can um, and, and they have to be they can't be adjacent to another enemy fighter so yep. you, can't, you can't get out of combat but you can basically move all the way across the board you have to get a charge token when you get there yeah but it's pretty pretty solid it's not bad They've got rid of some of the more rubbish um, objectives as well. Like there's no supremacy anymore because obviously no. they're really upset about that. Yeah, they had their own. I think it might only been worth two. Yeah, exactly. It's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse. It's three fight one. Three fight three fight a war band, and you have to get all three. And you only have it was, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, yeah, they they basically have um, reward for killing people. Yeah, effectively, they have got a couple for uh, being on objectives. I think um, there's certainly um, there's one for. Having more enemy fighters than the round number, which is an intriguing one, and could be a bit frustrating. But because yeah. Yeah, so you have to kill in the in round after round one, you have to have so. killed two. After round two, you have to have killed three, and after round three, you have to have killed four. Well, I got progressively further away Depending, from scoring. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> me, as the game tough, went on. Extra tough against someone like this purple yeah. girl. Be like, oh, I've killed two. Are oh, you bringing one back? Yeah, I think you did that. I think you brought one back at the end. Oh. I think I had it in hand. Just, um, just I rude. think I threw it away because just thought I'm never, if I didn't score it that round, I'm not scoring it. Never going to happen again, yeah. yeah. And they have also updated the deck, so they do have six surge cards because yeah. most of the season one warbands the first time around didn't have six, but these guys do now. So again, you've got much more uh, play in there to be able to score glory mid turn and then start to put those upgrades on. Yep. Yeah. So much like the support guard, I think they're a well thought out warband. I think they're a little bit more balanced. Or, or optimal than they were in the uh, in their previous incarnation. Looking forward to seeing these back revitalised on the tabletop. Their old deck was pretty good with Tooth and Claw yeah. rivals deck. I reckon this one probably is too because there's a lot. Like I said, there's a lot of cards for charging into in, people, making extra people's attacks, faces. and all that kind of stuff, which is what you need. And that's what they're all about. Tooth and Claw. So I think I can see that that, that pairing quite well with these. Haven't done that yet, but. You might see that on the channel soon. I think given that these guys are all about standing on objectives and swarming um, Fierce and Fortress all the way with these ones. I possibly. think so. Set up just, just in your half. Yeah. I reckon you're not going to go exploring, board. are you? That would be way too hard. No. You'll never get there. No. Even with your extra movement shenanigans. It would be tricky. Although in our game, I did get three of my fighters right to the back of your board. You did so. actually. Yeah, you did. You did. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that quick summary on the warbands, the new cards, and how they're looking in this new starter box. Yeah, do let us know if you're going to planning on picking them up and which rivals deck you're going to uh, pair them with for Nemesis if you want to do that. Yeah, if you've got any questions, do leave them comments down below. Don't forget to ring that bell, subscribe and like and all that good social media stuff. Yep, because we've got a load more Warhammer Underworlds content coming and so do let us know what you want to see because I think the game's, are, the game's in a launch pad position at the moment and we want to kind of build what you know, the community that you got you, know, you want to see. So let us know what you want to see and yep. we'll try the our best to bring it to the screen. And if you want to support us even further, do check us out on Patreon. We do put games on there that we're playing with them uh, just to show off how they look on the tabletop. Yes, so that's lots more lovely content uh, for everybody out there if you do support us on Patreon. There will be slightly fewer battle reports, I think, but yeah. more on Patreon because everything everything's going on there. Everything's you can see everything. Patreon. It's a bit raw, yeah. but you can see everything on there. So we see you soon in the Underworlds. Bye! Bye.